What happens at laser tag never stays at laser tag. Laser. Laser on focus tag talk. Laser on focus tag talk. I feel like you could be like in Ghostbusters or something. Oh my God, you have got some stories. Let's talk about laser tag. Who knew you were a laser tag legend? Time to get laser unfocused. Tag talk with Tivia. Welcome to Laser Unfocused Tag Talk. Hi, I'm Tivia. Think laser tag is just about targeting the flashing lights on an opponent? Well, in the game of Space Marines 5, there's a lot more to it as we learn from three players in the competitive scene. Well, I'd like to welcome my guests tonight who are all competitive SM5 players in the Laser Force system. And we're going to start by, I'd love to ask you each to introduce yourself by your name and your code name and what position you play most often. Sure, we can do that. I'll start since I know I'm the oldest of the players on this call. Um, <laughs> my name's Chris. My code name is Old Man Th Than. I've been playing Laser Force since 1997, um, and my primary position is is resupply. I play ammo or or medic pretty interchangeably. Most recently, it's been ammo. And let's kind of throw in how long you've been playing. And so. we're 27 and a half years at this point, so a bit. <laughs> Jump on in, guys. You know, I guess I'll, uh, I'll go next. <laughs> My name is Caleb Batar. I'm, uh, I'm over here in Utah, and I've been playing SM5 for about almost 10 years since, uh, since 2015. And then my favorite position is... is Commander. It's probably the one I've played the most in the past few competitions I've been to. So very good. All right. Uh my name is Bolton Rockwood Wood, but you can just call me Rockwood. Um, I've been playing for like basically, you know, a few minutes compared to these guys. I've only been playing since 2020. Um, and I'm also in Utah and just a few minutes south of Caleb here. Um, and I love playing scout um, is my my favorite position. So we got all, all kind of three of the position styles covered right now. Excellent. So I was recently playing laser tag. It happened to be a different system, but I was playing with some new players in a public game. And um, one of the players was a little confused about what to do. And my simple advice to her in that moment was just shoot any flashing lights. But that's a very oversimplified version of laser tag in general, and you want to really take the complexity up. There's a whole lot of interchangeable parts going on with SM5, Space Marine Spy, for those who might not know. And for those who aren't familiar, this could be kind of a bit of an introduction or a tutorial. So I'd love for you guys to just kind of jump in and give me some thoughts and feedback about, you know, the game itself. Let's talk about... Uh, how do we play SM5? Talk about the positions. How how does this all work for somebody who's brand new to the system? Well, for someone who's brand new to to the system, um, I would hope that they they're a, a, able to get at least a few standard games to start with, just to kind of mm -hmm. understand the 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 hardware because everything play, plays a little bit di differently. But um, you know, from a from a game per game perspective, you've got no background in it whatsoever it's a squad based con combat game where in tournament teams we play with si six person teams there are five positions hence the very creative name of space marines five um and you've got a medic an ammo two scouts a heavy and a a commander every position does slightly to very di different things and they all have to work together in order for your team to have any chance of success whatsoever. Um, in, in a nutshell, this game, you have limited shots and limited lives. Your medic is responsible for giving you lives. They have 20 lives and that's it. When they die, they're dead. No more lives for you. So very sad. You have an ammo who is responsible for keeping your shots supplied. They start with 10 lives. They can max at 20. They get three lives for resupply from, from their medic. If your ammo dies, no more shots for you. Very sad. Um, is probably the most devastating thing to have an ammo die er early in, in a Space 5 game because it essentially turns you into a giant shooting gallery. Um, you've got 
two scouts who each start with 15 lives and 30, 30 shots. They've got one shot power, one hit point, as do the ammo and and the medic. And their job can be everything from assisting on, on defense to assisting in, in the attack to generally making themselves huge pains in the ass, something that Rockwood is actually very, very good at. And actually, so is... Caleb as well. He's also a huge pain in my ass a lot of the times when, <laughs> when, when, when we play. Then we move on to the the power positions, as it were. You've got your heavies, which have three hit points and three shot power, so they take anything down in in one hit. Does not matter who who it is. They start with ten lives, max at twenty. Start with twenty shots max at 40 um and they're your basic destroy everything type player um who also is generally more more defensively minded for their 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 resupply and last but definitely not least you've got your your commander who is typically your main attacking force on on the team um three shot power two two hit points starts again starts with 15 lives and 30 30 shots maxes at 30 lives and 60 shots um and also has the ability to to drop drop nukes which are essentially a method of killing the entire other team all at once and dropping lives off of everybody at at once there's some additional pieces that that i'm missing in 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 here but that is the very very high level overview of space marines 5. Well, and I want to contribute something to that, just a little piece of advice from a female perspective. The three hits, we'll talk about like why each of these positions matters and what you're going to be doing, you know, and trying to tag somebody out with with three hits versus one. Um, I remember a game where I was playing commander and the uh, commander on the opposite t- team, he, um, he identified that I was a three hit, but he didn't know which three hit I was. So he assumed the other way. And I'm just going to give all you boys a piece of advice. Whenever you have a female commander and you're not sure if she's commander or the other, you never shout out, Tivia is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's bad just in general to to assume <laughs> which three hit somebody is if if you don't know. Just call- I'm just gonna say, never call a woman heavy. Just assume she's commander. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, okay, that's my two cents. Now, as for the other guys, let's let's weigh in a little bit here. So, uh, you know, talk to me about these positions and what you do strategically to make the most of them. Yeah, so um, I guess I'll, I'll jump in here before before Rockwood. Um, Chris, thanks so much for the awesome introduction, explanation to Space Marines and sort of what makes it the game it is and, and how it's organized positionally. Um, I guess we can dive into a little bit of a different perspective in terms of how a team can function. Um, typically, you know, your your typical team is going to run your commander as the tip of the spear, and then the rest of the players sort of run support. Um, there are different team compositions, of course, depending on who you're playing with, that might support a different play style. Uh, but in the most traditional sense, that's sort of what we run into, um, where you have, you know, your commander and your scouts in that mid to front line, your heavy and your resupplies in that more back line. So... I don't want to take too much time from Rockwood's explanation, though. All right. Yeah, I didn't know she was talking to me. That's all good. Um, so basically, this is a story of the new people. Um, I run a club, actually, the Southern Utah Space Marines down here in St. George. Um, so we get a lot of new players. And this is a piece of advice that Thunder always gives us. Um, if it's their first game of Space Marines 5, the only thing you need to know is just shoot people, don't get shot, try not to die. Doesn't even okay, matter. So kind of the advice I gave points. to the woman the other day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you know, and then you know, Thunder will be like, oh, after 500 games, we can start getting you, you know, I'm filling you in on the basics. But um yeah, I I love Space Marines 5 because it's um like it it the objective is always the same, right? You go in, you find the enemy resupplies, and you kill them. Right. Super simple. Um, But what's super awesome is um, depending on the arena that you're playing in, it can be a totally different game. So I I love that um, even though the objective is always still there, you know, once you learn how to play Space Marines 5, you know, you can. 
you know, it translates well, obviously, but if you go to a different arena, the entire meta can change. Like Colorado's arena, where it's just king of the hill on the third floor. It's just super awesome. Um, yeah. Do you guys have a strategy that you like to start with while you're getting your bearings? I mean, obviously, you're you're going to adjust by the team, but is there a, something that you like to have as your, your starting point to get the ball rolling? Well, if you're yeah, talking so, about... Uh, okay. Go ahead. Lots go, of go, ideas. Go, go. Right? Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, I guess my, my dog wanted to chime in too there. <laughs> um, forgive me if she's howling a little bit during this. Um, I guess to sort of touch a little bit more on, uh, on what Rockwood was saying. Um, that really answers your question probably in in one of the best aspects of, depending on what arena you're playing in, can really change the game from start to finish. Um, so, for example, in, in a more fast-paced, smaller arena, you might not have a lot of time to set up and start. You really just have to jump in versus – our larger arena, like maybe, you know, Syracuse or Detroit, you have a few seconds to resupply your team a bit, sort of see the the feeling of the start of that game. So really what, what each game starts on, what your team needs at the start of every game does change based on the arena. Yeah, there's a there, there's a generalized, you know, point point of view that at at the start of the game, by and large, most people are go going to take a resupply of shots and lives right off the start, and it, and it's called called get getting done doubles. Um, but there are some mazes where you might intentionally leave one or two of your players not having gotten that early extra tap of shot shots and lives because you can so quickly be in contact with the, the enemy team. One of the you know best examples of that, I would say is probably the, the St. George maze, um, which is, which is for, for me, like one of the best kind of speedball mazes in the U S for, for space five um, and has so many different um, legitimate openings that each team can do that you oftentimes 100% need somebody you know fully up to either be attacking or 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 I'm defending so you can resupply your entire team at the start of the game in that maze but you run a a much higher risk in that maze of that going horribly wrong for you than in say Detroit where the arena is so large that literally everybody on both teams can get that initial double tap of shot shots and lives and have time to fully reactivate before they get in contact with the other team. So everything is everything is always a little bit different depending upon the 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 space that that you're in. There's there's definitely some underlying things that are that are in in common. Obviously you're trying to make sure everybody stays alive as long as possible. Um, but you definitely everything everything changes. Rockwood, you had your hand up. Yes, and I'd also like to add just for um, just to put into perspective, um, when you get shot or resupplied, um, you essentially you go down like your vest lights shut off, um, and it takes eight seconds before it comes back on, which just sounds like a number, but when you're like playing laser tag, um, especially when you're starting out, it can feel like an eternity. So like eight seconds. <laughs> can be very valuable especially in like the like you were saying in the in the smaller more fast-paced arenas which is why doubling can be kind of risky because eight seconds a lot can happen in eight seconds yes well, and on that note what do you guys feel about like what do you do when your resupply is not in sync with each other um well in in my case that's usually my fault if we're not in sync with each other because you know that's what i do um there's 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 usually a little bit of yelling if your resup isn't in sync with each other. Your 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 attacking players tend not to be overly happy if they're only getting one thing at a time when they're expecting two when they're, when they're expecting both things at 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 a time. Um, I mean, there's there's that there are occasionally strategic reasons why you will only get one thing in 
instead of two ha- having to deal do with you know did did one of the resupply players just get tagged down and you've just come up so you're going to be down for eight seconds anyway so you may as well get something while while we're waiting for the other person to come back up there's there's some there's some permutations around that but usually it's 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 just a matter of um, communication between the resupply to get kind of back on the same page. And if, if one player is playing too fast, you know, you know, then the other one, you know, you either need to speed up to match the person who's playing too fast or the person who's playing too fast needs to slow down a little bit so that you're, you are back in sync and you are getting everybody the things that they actually need. Um, one other thing, you know, you know, with the, with the eight set, second de- downtime, um, which is, you know, feature more unique to, force which photon players will be will, will be familiar with um in that eight seconds of of downtime you're only safe for four of it the back half of your downtime is a four second reset period where somebody can shoot you again if they are not the last person to have shot you or they have or they've shot something else in the, the meantime so as rock would said a lot can happen in eight seconds and that eight seconds can very quickly turn into 16 24 32 40 if you're if you're not careful something else that i know is kind of a challenge when you're new into the game is uh, let's talk about following and showing your sensors thoughts on this <laughs> um yeah so this do we agree this with this do we think this more... is a good rule to have in the game so so caleb i will okay. let you talk Rock in just a second head, yes very emphatically yeah. i will i will you you use talk your about words too Rock, but that's okay. yeah it is such talk, a good rule there's nothing yeah. i just um, let me just get off this off my chest real quick there's nothing more infuriating than when you're playing super well and by the rules and then someone just boop mm. <laughs> yeah there's we've we've done um we we actually started way back in way back in the day we didn't have the um sh- shielding and ch- chasing rules um we we had them but they were very different and just not good as far as far as that goes um when i went down to australia in 1999 to play you know a tournament down, down there i brought these back with, with me because this is this is actually the the australian rule set and obviously there, there's been some tweaks and changes it, it, in that time frame, but the basic th- things around having to have a ch- shoulder sen- sensor visible w- when you take a shot and only being able to chase three meters along the same path as a deactivated player that th- those pieces are still are still the same. Um, from a from a game flow perspective, having these rules in place for f- for force in general and space five in 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 particular, it's such a better game overall because these rules force movement. Um, part of the reason for the sh- shielding rule that came in, part of it was originally a, a, um, a um, equipment issue. Um, the, the original li- laser force guns only had a phaser down the barrel, or sorry, only had a sensor down the barrel of, of the phaser. These sensors could often end up being broken by g- general public players and I'm sure by tournament players as well. So what they were finding in Brisbane with their leagues in, you know, way back in the dark ages was you'd have one team on one side of the arena and one team on the other side of the arena, basically just putting their guns up over the walls and doing this and hoping to get a hit. And there was no movement to, to in the game. So what's the way to, to, you know, force, force movement. Well, you force people to have to show a sensor in order to, to take a shot. Um, and so you add that, and you add the so, so you, add, you add that piece to force movement, and then you add the chasing rule limiting how long you can you can fall off to somebody because you've got the reset time, and without that you can one hundred percent have just just a you know a a heavy sit on a medic and just you know completely destroy them because of the hit power and shot power differential. So there's obviously some some you know details and whatnot that go into you know that and some and some weird interactions you can sometimes get within within those rules but by and large having played both with these rules and without these rules 
it is it is 100 a better game with them than without them sorry i never shut up it's it's, it's a problem <laughs> it's, a, it's a strong opinion it's a good one um I mean, I'll definitely take a moment to agree as, as somebody who hopped in a little bit later than the invention of fire, um, you know, in terms of how long <laughs> I've been playing for. But I would definitely say, you know, in the future, I do see some adjustments to the rules. I mean, we are we're looking at, you know, some dated rules that have worked for a really long time. But what we'll see is advances in equipment and advances in gameplay, new metas, just like how you know, adopting the Australian rule set, which is now the international rule set, you know, changed a lot of the gameplay. We'll have new equipment that comes in and changes a lot of the gameplay. And and maybe at some point that really outdates the need for some of these rules. Um, but as of right now, I would 100% concur with the other two in, in that these rules are currently important. They increase the quality of play. They increase the game time. I mean, I, to be honest, Dan, you'll have to let us know how you guys used to play any game longer than three minutes back when that was going on. Um, with difficulty. So, yeah, definitely just a, right, just agreeing with the other two on that. Yeah, I think it also heavily incentivizes skill. Um, and it uh, adds um, another layer of complexity of, you know, tactical play. Um, it You have to use your head. You have to use your head in it. It makes you it makes you think. Do you guys find any difference in your play styles when you play, say, Gen Seven versus Gen Eight, and or piggybacking on to the idea of new technology? What do you think that could could be implemented into uh, the next generation that might change your game play style? Trampolines in the arenas and jetpacks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like his answer. <laughs> um, but I'll definitely say, you know, as somebody who hopped in on Gen 7, sorry, let me get some water in. Um, as somebody who hopped in on Gen 7 and had played maybe a, a number of times on Gen 6 packs and now only plays on Gen 8, the gameplay and the experience really does vary. Um, how you can play also varies just because that that new technology, um, for example, my favorite one is on, on Gen 8, it's so much harder to dodge missiles unless you're Rockwood trying to missile me. Um, then he just struggles. I don't know what it is. But um, on Gen 7, I used to be just phenomenal, not to toot my own horn, but dodging missiles was just as easy as blinking or drinking some water. Now... <laughs> On Gen 8, it's like trying to talk and your dog keeps interrupting you while you're in the middle of talking. It just it happens every time. Yeah, the 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 Gen 8 packs were def are, are definitely a lot easier to hit in general than prior generations of of the of the equipment. Um I started playing on on Gen 4, because again, yes, I'm old and I've been doing this a while. Um and and, and you know, you think it was easy to do, do, dodge a missile on on Gen Seven, Gen Gen Four. It was pretty. It, it was like missiles were very difficult to get off on Gen Four equipment because of how easy the, they were to dodge. Um, I say easy in in quotes. I still could never do it because I'm terrible at it. But you know, for people that had the skill to do it, they could. Um, it's gotten subsequently, you know harder and harder to dodge as the as the the equipment has has gotten better and then yeah gen 8s is just difficult walls are <laughs> just a suggestion it. to missiles now yeah also i would like to add um and there is one small difference between all the gens one through through seven and gen 8 is um the fact that Gen 8 has a screen so you can see how many lives and shots and special points you have and how long you've been down and how much longer until you're up and also who shot you and also who you're aiming at. Just some minor things. That's not minor in the grand sch scheme of things. I mean, it. A joke. The, fact, the fact that you used to have to like basically keep all that information in your head um, 
in terms of like where, where you were relative on shots and lives and everything else on top of, you know, what, what is a complex system of interacting positions for the, the um, gameplay. It definitely added a whole other level of complexity to an already complex game. Um, the fact that, you know, kids these days don't have to deal with that. I mean, it does make me a little mad because, you know, I didn't get to grow up on easy mode with the with the screen but i am actually genuinely happy that it is there because because the game is so complex in 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 general things that do remove a little bit of complexity are nice um although it is funny because you do get people that basically screen watching the for m m most of the game which causes its own set of awareness challenges sometimes People running into walls because they're looking down. People <laughs> running into walls because they're looking down or or just not being aware of what's happening in the game around them because they're because they're constantly looking down and checking to see, oh, how many shots and lies am I at? Like you shouldn't need to be looking down every time you get shot to see what your shots and lives are at. Like you should have yeah. a rough idea and and the check should should just be you know maybe every couple of times just to double check in case you've gotten you know hit multiple times at once because it is possible to lose multiple lives on on multiple people shoot, shooting you at once so you know that can be something that you may want to, to double check but you don't need to look down every single time you get shot that's a, just a pet peeve of mine you guys have opinions on how the game plays better or worse or any any tidbits between um, you, you, we've named a few arenas that you frequent, but mm -hmm. Syracuse is a single level. Detroit's got two and Loveland's got a whopping three. So when you compare those, um, uh, how do you find the, the game being altered? So, yeah, so uh, yeah. Caleb, go ahead. I've talked too much. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, so if they say the the speed of the game is a big one, and that's something that we we often discuss as a community is, you know, is this a, a slower paced arena? Is this a fast paced arena? Um, you know, something like Loveland where it's three levels. Well, out of those three levels, you know, I always joke and say two and a half because that third one really is just a, a long hallway. But the importance of it is it keeps the entire game fast paced, right? Um, versus Syracuse, although a one floor arena, it's also it's massive. I mean, it's it's super long, it's pretty wide. Um, like it takes a while to get from one end to the other if you're moving as fast as you can, too. So, because of that, the game's greatly impacted, your play style is greatly impacted. Um, and sometimes it means that players who are typically good on one position may not be as good on that position in a larger arena. Um, you know, whether it's due to stamina or, or what they're good at what suits their play style so i'll hand it off Rapid, yeah, any thoughts? Yeah. sorry um, man, we're cutting you off <laughs> no no I, that's it's fine rockwood you, go, go ahead yeah i've only i've only played um space marines um, in i guess three arenas i don't know i wouldn't really count cedars as an arena fair but um like he says, St. George, we only play on the first floor. Um, so it's much easier to um, maintain where people are, right? You, Everyone is on the same, pretty much the same playing field as you versus uh, Loveland, where it's three floors. Like, you don't want to be on the first floor. You're just fish in a barrel. There's no really good places to play out of there for very long, right? You want to be up top where you can see everything. Um, and it also adds more challenges for... um. Just for rules and stuff, like if you're shooting, you know, you got to be careful. Like if you're leaning over, you got to keep two feet on the ground. You got to make sure they can see your gun in your shoulder based on the angle and stuff. So it can add some some tricky things. And definitely, you know, you have to you have to be aware of angles above and below you as well as in front of you and behind you and stuff. So it can add you need more game sense, I would say, for the multi-level arenas. Do you guys have a favorite arena? I know that's a loaded question, but <laughs> of of the arenas you've played, any anyone stands out? 
I mean, I think I, I think mo most people will, you know, will 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 claim their their home arena or or their original home arena as their as their favorite because it's where it's where it's where you learn to play. It's 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 where you're, you're going to have like the most, you know, kind of fond memories at as it were. So so you know, my my favorite arena was, you know, let's for Sacramento, which sadly no longer exists. You know, that's you know sad, but what are you gonna do um as far as like a favorite non-home arena um if i'm talking with it within the u.s oh we lost rockwood um if we're ta talking within within the, the u.s um honestly i really like the saint george maze um i didn't the first couple times i played it I, th I thought it was the worst thing ever and then once i got some more games in it and realized oh this this arena actually makes a ton of sense. Um, it, it rocketed it up tw towards the top, and honestly, I really like Sy Syracuse because it's one of the few mazes that you know has carpet with padding in it. And the older <laughs> I get, the more I appreciate that. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, for me, uh, I'll be honest. You know, Loveland being my home arena and Saint George I'm being back. my Perfect. Um, St. George being my new home arena and then, you know, us building out the Cedar Arena. Um, none of them are my favorite. Um, they, <laughs> none of them have ever been my favorite, which is something I could say with confidence. Not that I don't like them. It's just um, I honestly my favorite arena is the Detroit Arena. Um, it's always been the most interesting one to me. And a close follow up is the Syracuse Arena. Not going to lie, even in my young, sprightful age, um, that padding does feel wonderful. Um, but I love the Syracuse Arena purely because the size and that single floor aspect really pushes me to be a better player. And Rockwood, do you have a favorite arena? Well, out of the two actual arenas I've played at, I really love St. George's Arena, specifically because of the opening. Because there are four bases, you know, and each team starts in one. And so it's uh, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a gamble. Like, you know, are we going to go, you know, before the game starts, you decide which base you're going to take. But you don't know which base the enemy is going to take. So it can play out as you both go for different bases and you start out from there. Or, you know, you both go for the same base. And then it, it can totally, completely change the trajectory of the game just based off that opening. Um, and I think that it's a little bit, it's it's fun. What do each of you really like most about uh, playing this game? Uh, I like the fact that, you know, after 27 years of, of playing it, the game is still evolving and, and there's all, there's always something, there's always something new to learn from watching other players play. Um, you know, that it, I mean, I think I I feel like that's that's a common theme with a lot of you know long term hobbies. You know, there's always there's always something new. There's always there's there's always something that you're that that you're trying to um, improve on, and this the this game because it is so complex gives you so many opportunities to both be humbled um, and to find ways to improve your game. Um, I I can definitely you know see like you know multiple but multiple tournaments that 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 I've played multiple events I've played and it's like there are definitely times it's like I have been completely and totally humbled by new newer players which is great I mean it's not good for my ego but it's great to see you know that sort of you know that 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 sort of you know passion from newer players within the community as well who are also want wanting to get better that you watch these players improve and they and you go from you know casually you know just smacking them aside in game to them turning you inside out and so you know that constant just you know watching people improve at, at this point is kind of my one of my biggest things that i just enjoy about it as i get yes i get i still get to improve on on a my game but there's only so much my game is going to improve at this point like i'm old i'm slowing down it's it's a problem but watching other people get better has been kind of a gift these last few 
few years and it's been it's been great to see other guys what do you all like um, best about the game what i love best about the game is uh it's kind of cheesy but you know the the friends you make along the way is the real space marines five um i just i love i love the the company um it's so awesome to be able to um play with your friends especially traveling like getting all of your best friends together and then traveling and then just playing laser tag for you know three days or a week is literally just so awesome and also the game's fun too i guess <laughs> <laughs> um well a little bit of a different take on it i mean my perspective has shifted a few times in the past couple of years now i would 100% agree with both of these guys' opinions on it. I think the the new players coming in have been phenomenal. Um, you know, Rockwood as an example is I I moved to Utah and and you know he had been playing for about a year at that point and even seeing you know in the past three years that growth. Let alone you know if I I wish I could have played some of his first games to him right <laughs> was Jovi's um, most improved. The the new players are fantastic scenes growing it's great and then of course i agree with rockwood's point that you know the the friends you make the connections you make are amazing um but if i look at my current perspective of it i have to say the growth potential um i mean i think something like this as far as both activity entertainment you know has has super super big growth potential well, and that, I to think, me, drives passion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, the community really has a, an active role to play in growing the scene. And I'd love to know two questions, and this will put you on the spot a tiny bit, but I'd love to know who was most influential in helping each of you to grow into the scene. And who do you see coming in as an up and comer who you're most excited to see what happens down the road with them. I'm going to let the other two start. The, I'm going to let the other two start to answer on this before I answer and put, put them yeah. on the spot for a change. Then let's, let's have the, the youngest first Bolton. All right. Well, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I love laser tag. I've been playing it. Since as long as I can remember, I just love playing it. Um, but I really did not like Space Marines 5. And the only reason I even continued to play it after the first time I played it was because I got free games because I worked at Laser Mania, which is the St. George site. Okay. Um, I hated the idea of like competitive laser tag, you know. Um, I didn't know anyone. But, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know if it's Stockholm syndrome or if I just grew into it, but you know, I learned to appreciate it once I started to get better. Um, and then I got to know pretty much everyone, like pinning it on one person, like that just doesn't do it justice. Break everyone at, that plays at St. George is just such a they're just such good people that like once you get to know them, it's just impossible not to like them or be friends with them. So it's just so awesome every week going and playing with them. Uh, and then Thunder, Laser Force Thunder, um, and Caleb and uh, Snuffles and stuff were talking about some kind of tournament coming up, you know, in like a year. And so we kind of had a, a little B team put together. So Metal Face and Satyrs, one and, and uh, Fluffy Cloud, Snuffles' younger brother. They're like having them as a, you know, like I already have a team picked out and stuff. And, and these guys are willing to train us really um on top of just improving in general, um, once I started to take it kind of seriously, it just kind of all blended together. Um, and I really wanted to go to this tournament. So I, I practiced with them. And then ever since then, I just, I love, um, I love going to uh, all the competitions and uh, Mega Members Nights trademark and stuff like that. <laughs> Excellent. And as for you guys, any mentors to shout out or new blood? that you're excited about? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'll go next and then I'll let 
Than finish us off, but um, I'd say, you know, my two biggest mentors, I, I'd love to shout out two of them here. First one is uh, Josiah or the Fear Turkey or Bagel. He's had a couple name changes, but um, in terms of who got me into the game, who took, you know, little 12, 13 year old Caleb and said, here's competitive laser tag. Now get good at it. Um, <laughs> I definitely love to give him a shout out. He's pushed me for every single year for the past nine, almost 10 years. Um, and then my second one, hopefully he watches this. I'd love to give to a uh, Baden or Brew. There was a period of time in which, you know, I wasn't a good player, of course, just like everybody hits that time when they're first starting or whatever it is, right? Um, and Baden taught me some amazing things and gave me a new perspective on the game. And I started to improve a lot more after that. Got a lot better after that. You know, I was lucky enough to play in a, a tournament with him, and it was one of the most eye-opening experiences I I had. So shout out to him. And then in terms of up-and-coming players, gosh, I wish I could say just one, but I'd love to do a huge shout out to all of the new Loveland players and the new St. George players that are coming in right now. Um I think, you know, so many of them have potential and so many of them are already showing huge upside for the time and effort that people around them have put in and, and the time they've put in. So I can't just shout out one. So that's that's at least my view. Fair enough. Oh, I guess it is my turn. Um, so turn. as as far as, um, you know, mentors with it within the 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 game and whatnot, um, I'd had few of my, you know, most of mine are, are actually from the from the Australian scene, um, because you know, and the you know going going down there in '99 and get, getting involved in in that side side of things and being able to bring some of that some of that back to to the U.S. scene. Um, you know, kind of helped set the groundwork for a lot of, you know, where, where we are today as, as a scene. So, so for me, probably the, the two biggest mentors I've got are, were, were Tragedy from the Brisbane site and Night Owl from the, the Oakley site. Um, basically, you know, being able to, you know, communicate with, with, with those guys and kind of, and kind of like work through, especially in the er the er early days, like trying try, try, try to work through a lot of the kind of pushback on bringing the rule, the, the Australian rules to, to the U S to them start with, um, you know, being able to talk with them and kind of, and go through, you know, here, here are things that have, you know, have been pushed back on here are changes that we have tried to make to, to, to these rules. Here's why these changes didn't work because anytime you bring in a new, a new rule set, people always, there's always a certain amount of resistance to it. And there was certainly a large amount of resistance to it when I brought it back and, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, um, proposals forward. Well, let's change the rule like this. Well, actually they already tried this and here's the problems that that opens up. Well, can we change the rule like this? Well, actually it's already been tried. Here's the issues that that op opened up. So having them as resources to be able to, um, you know, talk through those things in the initial was was super helpful, and then also I've, I've got to shout out my my resupply co-host co um, Death Knight and Guy Next Door. Um, you know, being able to do you know that podcast with with, with them now for the, these last God, we've had this going now for eight years, and you know, live for, for the last like four, and you know, being able to you know talk laser tag on a weekly basis with two of my best friends is just helpful um especially since i don't get to play on a weekly basis anymore because i'm you know not living close to a competitive site um in terms of you know uh, up and coming players we had so many of them at this at this most recent nationals um the the entirety of the loveland b, b team um yeah a bunch of the 
new St. St. George players as well. Again, like, like Caleb, like it's, it's hard to shout out just one person um, because there's actually so many of them right now, which is, which, which is great. I mean, it, it does help that, you know, both Loveland and St. George have, have, have active sites and have active advanced players that care about the game and want to recruit new people in, um, you know, from it, you know, that, that is going to be one of, one of the things that helps maintain our scene kind of during, during this time. I mean, as with, as with every system, we lost sites during COVID. I think, I think, I don't think that there's a scene in the U S or the world for, for that matter can say that they didn't lose important sites to the scene because of COVID. Um, so I feel like we're, I feel like every scene in the world right now is kind of in this rebuilding phase where we're trying to figure out, okay, what sites are, you know, are competitive vi viable, what sites can we, you know, start trying to bring through to regrow our, regrow our respective scenes. Um, and so seeing the work that the St. George people are doing and the Love people are doing, and now the Syracuse guys are doing, and the Detroit people are starting to do um, to, to try to increase that, that recruitment and try to get those, those newer players in is really pretty fantastic as far as that goes. So, yeah. What's yeah. good Shout for one scene? I, Mathis, and Vulcan. Yeah. yeah. What, what what ends up being good for one scene in terms of player growth hopefully ends up being good for all scenes in terms of play, play, player growth because you know if if there are things that we do within the force community that help grow our that help, help grow our, our player base hopefully those are things that we can you know pass off to uh, you know other students like hey this is what worked for us maybe it'll work for you and if there's that there, there are other scenes that, that that are growing you know maybe they can say hey this is stuff that worked for us maybe maybe it'll work 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 for you you know for for all that you know we all have our own our own systems that we that we prefer and everybody does you know really the the, the healthiest tag scene is one where all of us are growing players Sorry, Rob, well I cut you off. Well, I think we've covered a whole lot of information here about the game, and hopefully it's inspiring to some players who might, you know, be coming in from a different scene or a different vantage point and maybe give it a go. Uh, before we wrap things up, I always love to do a little rapid fire tag talk. And when there's more than one person, my rule is you guys can't use the same answer twice. So you can decide who round well, we could round robin this in fact i'll decide who goes first that's probably fair so, okay but um quick questions to you quick answers back you game yep yeah. okay we'll go than caleb rockwood than favorite position to play ammo caleb scout rockwood scout baby all right least favorite position to play than heavy Caleb? Ammo. Rockwood? Uh, medic, ammo, or heavy. <laughs> I'm Favorite a two-trick pony. Okay. Favorite souvenir you've ever won or acquired at a laser tag site? Dan? Um, so 2006 in Auckland, our, the, the owner at the time um, basically actually invested in really nice metal trophies so i've got a couple of I, i've got my second place trophy from that and and an all-star ammo that that are both you know solid metal that when you actually when, when you flick them they ting and that's kind of my favorite cool caleb yeah um uh, my 2015 rookie of the year award that that has its special place in my heart awesome rockwood Microphone, forgot about that. Um, <laughs> during the duos tournament last year, um, and I realized that I had a shot of winning the Golden Gun Trophy, which is highest accuracy. Uh, Caleb was with me. We went to the Lego store, and I made a a little Lego me with the trophy. <laughs> and then it. the next day, I won the trophy. So it's good. Oh, very nice. That's awesome. Makes my heart warm. All right. Favorite snack at the concession stand, Dan. 
Nestle Crunch Bar. Caleb? Ooh, Hershey's Cookies and Cream. Ooh, good one. Rockwood? Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> well, this took a turn. <laughs> All right. And my favorite question. Favorite brand of we never run in the arena shoes? Dan? Brooks. Caleb? Oh, all birds, two and true. All right. And Rockwood? Got these bad boys, some Nike basketball shoes. Love it. All right. Does anybody have anything else that any of you want to add before we wrap things up here? See you all soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, the greatest for... scout that's ever lived. Uh huh. <laughs> And for, you know, for, for any, you know, cross system players that are, that are li listening to, to this, um, we do have an event c c coming up in January at, at the Syracuse Ooh. site. Um, it's our, our East, East Coast t t tournament. Um, of course, the exact dates are escaping me right, right at the moment. It's early January in, in Syracuse. If you come to the Let's Force Tournament Facebook group, in, um, we can get you all, all the, the details for it. Um, but this is this is intended as a, a as a you know competitive but but not competitive tournament. This is you know one of those, you know, please come and, and experience the game if if you haven't um, in a in an environment that isn't a Nats pressure cooker. So if you're, you know, if, if you've been at all interested at in, in trying Space Marines 5 in a non-Armageddon environment, because the Armageddon Space 5 environment is completely different than, than a, a normal Space 5 environment, um, Syracuse in, in January for East Coast would be, would be a great place to, to try that out. Wholeheartedly agree. And I may even be bringing a surprise or two to the party. So I hope to see you guys there. And I want to thank you all for taking some time to analyze and talk SM5 with me. That's my guests, Rockwood, Caleb, and old man Than, who invented fire. Thank you <laughs> so much, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, keep on tagging. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Tivia. Thank you, guys. Thanks for checking out this episode of Laser Unfocused Tag Talk. Listen for more episodes on the first and third Friday of each month. Want to be a guest on an upcoming episode? Find out more and follow my blog and website at tibiachickloveslasertag.com.